from the mcplive.tv studios located in downtown Conroe. It's the Conroe Art League, live. Hello and welcome to Cal Live, the show that introduces you to the many talented and creative artists of the Conroe Art League and to the beautiful art that they produce. My name is Ken Roy. I'm your host today, as well as the president of the Conroe Art League. And my guest today is the wonderful, productive artist, Mary <laughs> Williams. Mary, how you doing? I'm doing pretty good. How are you, Ken? I'm doing well. Thank you so much. Uh, this has become kind of a standard statement for me is that I know a lot of people at the Art League, but I just know them at the Art League. I know very little about them and that would hold true for you as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm going to assume our audience knows very little about you as well, even though you have friends at the Art League and they likely know a lot about you. Mm -hmm. But uh, for those like me, Mary, would you tell us some of your background, where you're from, if you're not a native Texan, or if you are, where you were from, if you're not from here, how'd you get here, and just a little bit about, you, about your background. Okay, well, I'm a native Californian. Okay. And I got to Texas as quick as I could. I came to Texas when I was around 30 years old, but before that, I was in the South Bay area in California. Mm -hmm. um, my dad was in the aerospace industry, so I followed his footsteps. I never took an art class in my life. I just went the science route. Yes. And um, I graduated from college and then got a job in the aerospace industry working um, on the space station and fighter jets and rocket fuels for hypersonic vehicles. And in California, the space industry, you said the Bay Area, which would be San Francisco, but is oh, that where the, the actual space industry is? I'm sorry, um, it's in Los Angeles. Los the, Angeles, They call yeah. it the South Bay Area, right. like Hermosa Beach, Redondo Beach. Redondo Beach, um, I know it, because yeah. Northrop Grumman happens yes. to be in Redondo Beach. Yes, yeah. yes, yeah. and I worked for Allied Signal there Yeah. and um, in Torrance, California, So, and I lived in Redondo Beach. Okay. Yeah, and that's where I grew up. So... What education or training prepared you to be in the aerospace field? I got a bachelor's in mechanical engineering, and then I went on for a master's in aerospace engineering. And um, that, that you, was my education. And you stopped and you don't go for a PhD. You stopped after I actually, after that. when I moved out here, I was going for an MBA. Actually, Is that right? Yeah. yeah. When yeah. I came out here, though, I moved to the oil industry. Oh. Yes. I first looked at a job at NASA down there, mm -hmm. but um, at the time, the there was just a lot of layoffs and stuff wasn't mm. doing too well. Mm -hmm. So I decided to try the oil industry, and I was in the oil field for, I want to say, 20 years out here. Really? Well, yeah. Designed drill bits for Halliburton and a couple of other companies, too. Very nice. So their loss may have been our gain because if you'd have got a job with NASA, you would have more than likely yes. been south. Yes. But the, the job was working on the robotic <laughs> arm for the space shuttle. So, yeah. So you ended up here and uh, doing um, um designing drill bits and um, some other things. And I thought about our conversation last night because I'd made about the comment about mechanical engineering. And I said, well, the stereotype, just to me, not to the rest of the world, by the way, just to me as well, a mechanical engineer, uh, what's that have to do with art? But, but I started thinking about it and I said, well, uh, engineers resolve problems. And there's got to be creativity in looking at the problem, breaking it down, seeing the big picture, doing the design. So I said, well, Ken, that was kind of stupid to say that because <laughs> obviously uh, an engineer is going to be uh, going to be quite creative in, in resolving things. Um, so you had a lot of formal education in the engineering field, and we were kind of joking before we started that you are, in fact, a rocket scientist. Um, and um, But when it comes to art, Mary, did you have any formal study with, with art? I never had one art class in my life until I retired, and I took my first watercolor class at Cal with oh, nice. Carrie Albritton. Yes. And uh, she told me to do like a general landscape, and I... I didn't know what a landscape was. I really did not. Because <laughs> <Not really. laughs> the only thing, the closest thing to art I could do was like hangman, you know. 
when yeah. you play the hangman game. Yeah. That was it. That was it. And I had to ask her, what exactly is a landscape, you know? And she looked at me and was like, okay. Because I knew landscape if I was printing something at work. Sure. You either print landscape or portrait, but that was yeah. about it. Yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> um, <laughs> I wish I'd have seen that one coming. That was pretty good. <laughs> so landscape or portrait. Oh, okay, I get it. All right. That's pretty good. Um, so you took a watercolor class, which a lot of people will say that's a very difficult medium to tackle first. Did you find it to be that way, Mary? Did I you? did. I did not know that was a difficult medium. Yeah. Um, I was t asking my husband, you know, and my stepson, what should I take? Should I take watercolor, oils, acrylics? Right. I didn't know what mm -hmm. to take. Sure. My stepson, he said, why don't you take watercolors? I heard the cleanup is easiest. <laughs> he was like, okay, that sounds good. <laughs> the brushes are easy to clean up afterwards. But then I found out it was pretty difficult. Yeah. Though. You know, he, he is exactly right. I've never tried oil painting for that reason. I don't mm -hmm. want to deal with the turpentine or yeah. turpinol or whatever it's called, clean the brushes, do all that stuff. So uh, I do too do watercolor because uh, I'll confess, I don't even wash the brushes half the time. Dip them in the water, <laughs> put them back on the table. Uh, so you you took uh, watercolor classes with Carrie. She's still teaching, by mm -hmm. the way. Uh, so she's had a good tenure doing watercolor classes at Cal. But I think uh, you also moved into another medium. I did. Uh, was it quickly? Um, uh, I think I did pastel, or I started pastels maybe two or three years after watercolors. So you stuck with watercolor that long? I did. Oh, so yeah, you're quite Yeah, I stuck with Carrie for watercolor. a while, and I took yeah. drawing classes, and yes. I'm the type of person when um, I like something, I need to learn everything about it, so I was just taking a ton of classes, reading yeah. books, yeah. I probably have a hundred art books at home I read. Yeah. I just need to learn everything about it, because sure. I really struggled um, coming from the left brain, going to the right brain. Right. It was a real struggle, yeah. and even still to this day I struggle sometimes, because sure. it's like, well I know I need to do this, 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 right, and right, this, right. but art is so different, you know, it's so creative and just so from your soul and it's a journey and yes. I love it and I love all the colors and yes. it's just wonderful. And uh, I thought you were going to say, so you surprised me, that you went from watercolor, I thought you were going to say to acrylics, but you went next to pastels. Next to pastels, I found this wonderful teacher, Kathy Fedu, who was offering a pastel yes. class. Yes. So I started taking pastels with Kathy and for, I guess, maybe a year or two, and oh, I just fell in love with pastels. It's, I just love pastels. Over, over watercolor, or about the same taste. Oh. They were easier for me to do, mm -hmm. but yeah. probably about the same. Yeah, I loved them both so yeah. much. Yeah. So you stuck with pastel for a while. For a while, learning everything you could. Everything about it. I could, and I and with pastels, I actually ended up taking some major workshops from some internationally known masters. Marla Bagdetta and Karen Margulis, and I'm actually still taking classes from them, and. Um, do you travel to tr to stay with I travel with to them? the workshops. Right now during COVID, it's all online. Mm -hmm. So I have like a monthly membership and you work with them one-on-one -on -one or with a group and you go through exercises and just trying to always, hmm. you're going to start seeing a lot more pastels in the gallery again because I've been working on so a lot of pastels on, okay. <laughs> lately. But, but at some point you did travel to do a workshop in person with them mm -hmm. and they were international. Yeah. Was that a reason to study pastel to go to Italy or you just went to Italy because you had to study pastel? Now, I don't know if you went to Italy. I'm just joking about that. I didn't go to that. Italy. I wish I could have uh, went to Italy. Probably, right? No, okay. it was all local here in the United yeah. States. Okay. I thought when you said they were international. They they're internationally known masters. Yeah. 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 Uh, um, so I was good. very honored to take I'll, them. I'll have to look up their names. They're not familiar to me, but that doesn't mean anything yeah. at all, obviously. But I, I'd like to look them up and see their artwork. I guess they have websites. Yes, that I can yes, see. yes. Uh, so you did workshops and you're still doing them and you're planning, it sounds like you're going to start producing more pastels. More pastels I've been working on recently. And I'm, last night I was doing watercolors again. So I love it. <laughs> that's my problem. I love them all. And well, then one day, actually, Conor Art League was offering another class, and it was in acrylics, right. and it was by 
Annie Lockhart. This was uh, oh maybe four or five years ago. Yeah. Uh, she was at LSAG, mm -hmm. and uh, she did a demo there. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the people from Cal ended up bringing her in for a workshop, and I took her workshop. And I just fell in love with acrylics, and you fall in love with a lot. I of know, media. I know. <laughs> I, and she was just such a soulful painter, uh -huh. and you got to play like a child, and uh -huh. that really helped me because getting away from the technical, fighting right. with the watercolors and pastels, and still yeah. that engineering side of me, yeah. it just really, I got to play like a child, and just it came from my heart and soul, and just play with colors and yeah. layers yeah. and. That's how I got into abstract acrylics. And you made a comment earlier about, you know, brain switching from the left to the right. And I was thinking, well, that's obviously maybe why before you begin a piece of work uh, or you do a lot of sketching, a lot of gesture, because you have to make that switch in your brain. It's, uh, pick up the pencil and get going. Mm -hmm. So you grab it, paint, paint brush, and you keep going and going until all of a sudden, aha, uh -huh, it's you're on to something now mm -hmm. and it kind of falls into place and that's uh that's the experience you had um what subjects inspire you now i'm gonna guess you stuck with landscapes uh and you you progress beyond landscapes i'm still doing um i love landscapes um pastel landscapes but i'm focusing more you'll see one of my pa earlier pastels but now i'm focusing more on different colors mm -hmm. i love a lot of bright saturated colors like instead of trees being green they might be purple or mm -hmm. you know orange yes. or you know just different kinds of colors yes a um, little bit more modern feel or less traditional I'm kind of going for you know there's a a, a style or genre called fauvism have you ever heard of it f-a-u-v yeah, not real yeah. familiar with it uh, they were called uh, the wild beast. I think that was the French word for that. Matisse was like one of the, mm, yes. and the, the colors, because that I think was his approach. I don't match the color with the reality. Mm -hmm. I'm going from emotion. And so consequently, if you look at Matisse, you see a lot, yes. of, a lot of flowing colors and bright colors and pure colors and, and uh, flat. And when you do color, you may have an answered it. When you pick a color, are you necessarily trying to complement or harmonize with the color that's already there? Or are you uh, searching for a color that's going to match your emotion, uh, your energy? Um, I would say more match my emotion or yeah. energies or just colors I gravitate towards. Mm -hmm. um, you know, blues and greens blues. and purples mm -hmm. and vibrant colors. Mm -hmm. um, and one thing I kind of struggle with sometimes is toning them down a little bit. <laughs> I need to bring in some softer colors, you know. Um, but that's, I generally go for the brighter yeah. colors. Yeah. yeah, I really. Uh, and I and we'll see some of your artwork in a little bit. And I can remember seeing some of your art when I first knew you at the gallery. Um, uh, so I, I think we could look at some of the pieces okay. of work if you're ready to take a look. So we have three pieces, right, Mary? We do. Uh, and this is going to be, I'm going to guess now, uh, that is a watercolor. This is a watercolor. That is a watercolor. <clears throat> now I'm going to tell you my impression of it first, and, and then I'd like to ask you to tell us the title and uh, some other things, your inspiration, so on. But uh, what I like about this one, of course, is going to the horizon, and that horizon to me um, looks like it's a swelling sea. It looks, mm -hmm. I mean, it looks kind of typical <coughs> at the beginning, but I look back and it mm -hmm. gets darker and it gets to be a little bit more um, the waves seem to increase. Um, so that's what I see in it, um, from the, uh, from the beach to the, uh, to the background, uh, a little bit of change in energy there with that. What's the name of that piece, Mary? California Dreaming. <laughs> yes. Okay. And that's a scene in California where I grew up. Um, my parents used to take us camping every year to a beach called Leo Cabrillo. Okay. And we used to love camping there. Mm -hmm. And um, it's just a beautiful, gorgeous area right on the coast, but it was surrounded by hills where you would camp. Mm -hmm. Well, when I met my wonderful husband before we were engaged, 
we went out there to visit my family and he took me to that exact spot in that painting and that's where he asked me to marry him. Is that right? Yes. Oh, what a nice and story it's on It's just that. so sweet. He took me to my special place at Leo Grillo and yeah. that's exactly where we were standing out looking where he asked me to marry him. You Mark went back Williams. to you went back to paint, or was there a picture taken that uh, day? We took pictures. You took yeah. pictures. Go back into the studio and right. uh, and put it out. Yes, always got. Yes. Did I? Did I ask you the name? Did I ask and I already forgot, or did I ask you the title of the piece? California Dreaming. California Dreaming. I did forget right away. <laughs> okay, so that sounds familiar. I should know it. Yeah, California Dreaming. Uh, okay, very nice watercolor. Could I ask uh, the size of it? Uh, I think that was a 10 by 12. Yeah, okay. Very nice. Okay. Let's look at the second piece. And uh, uh, you all kind of poked fun at me a little bit uh, before we got started because I said, Mary, is that a painting or is that a <laughs> photograph? And, uh, well, it's a painting. But it uh, from here, uh, it, it has some photographic qualities to it. Not to say that it's, you know, hyper-realism, but, again, I sure like that a sense of perspective from the beach. The pier works to me. It works perfectly to bring you out um, past the beach into the water. And again, that, that darker water as a border in the background. So uh, tell us about that piece. What's the name of it? Uh, the name of that one is Manhattan Beach Pier. Mm -hmm. And this again is in Southern, Southern California. California. Yep. And uh, very close to where I grew up. Mm -hmm. And that's a pastel, mm -hmm. uh, that one. And that's a place where I just grew up on the beaches there, always looking out at those piers. Mm -hmm. And as an adult, we'd go down to the piers and walk with my husband. And we mm -hmm. go shopping or eat, res eat at restaurants and watch people. And it's just so beautiful. And sure. We're both nature lovers. And yeah. it's just so gorgeous down there and so much... It's so alive, those waves. So when you're painting those scenes mm -hmm. and you're being reminded of home, does that scratch the itch that you're not home or does it make you more homesick uh, to go back to California, at least even just to visit? Uh, uh, it does help. It does help. It does help because um, I love Texas mm -hmm. and I would never leave Texas. Mm -hmm. oh. I am a Texas girl. <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, but I love visiting California. I love the ocean and, you know, mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. just gorgeous down there. And I do still have um, some family out there sure. I can go visit. Yeah. So. Okay. Um, so let's bring up the third piece. And uh, this is what I first knew you by, mm -hmm. right? Because I remember uh, the first time I saw your art was our 12 by 12 show. And folks, that's what we, uh, it's a show we use to uh, raise money for uh, senior students in Montgomery County. Uh, so you had uh, some uh, abstract in that 12 by 12, mm -hmm. and you had an honor in that 12 by 12, which was what in that, uh, that honor in the first 12 by 12 that I remember anyway. Maybe it wasn't your first one. It was my first one. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it was, uh, you were chosen as a select 12, I remember. Right. Huh? Yes. It was quite I an honor. I couldn't believe it. Yes. <laughs> I, was very, <laughs> I was very excited. <laughs> um, and I, I'll tell a little story, and it's on me, not on you. Uh, but when all the photographs were taken of the 12 by 12, it was my job to put them on the website because mm -hmm. we use a, a, a uh, we use a, a vendor site to auction off the 12 by 12 before it gets to the gallery. So I got to your piece and I put it on the website. And then an email goes out when it's all said and done to all the artists to say, please take a look to make sure everything is okay. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if it was an email or a phone call, but I got <laughs> it right away. And you said, uh, my piece is upside down. <laughs> And I, and I myself, well, how am I supposed to know <laughs> it's upside down or not? And I might have said that, and you said, well, you can tell by my signature. <laughs> and I said, oh, yeah. <laughs> That's one way to tell. <laughs> it's upside down. So uh, thanks for that education. <laughs> Uh, I yeah. had somebody else do that, too. With, I think Ed yeah. did that with one of my pieces, too. Yeah. Uh, well, next time I, I um, somebody, uh, before I get a phone call, I'll look for the signature when it's abstract <laughs> art to know which way to put it. But um, can you put the piece back up? Um, 
what I like about this piece is uh, uh, the pattern and the energy, obviously, that pattern. Uh, I'm going to guess it's going uh, clockwise, but I don't know that it couldn't be going counterclockwise either. But I like that pattern and, and really just going up. And um, tell, us, uh, tell us the name of that one. And that is acrylic. This is an acrylic abstract, and this was really inspired from that workshop at Cal from mm -hmm. Annie Lockhart, mm -hmm. where you just paint from your soul and you play like a child. And um, that's a 24 by 36. Wow. And it's probably got maybe 15 layers on it. And I just started painting and having fun. And when I liked something, I kind of left it alone mm -hmm. and then would go to a different spot and just kind of see what came out of it. And, oh, I'm sorry, it's called Enchanted Bridge. Okay. And I don't know if you can see, it seems like there's a bridge going up, and I thought this yes. was more like some, you go up the bridge into some fantasy land or mystery area. And nice. I wanted the viewer just to... Mm -hmm. Take it away. Take it up, away, up and, away. And yeah. let the viewer decide where they want to go and where this is bringing them. And I love mm -hmm. those colors. Those are my big, bright, vibrant colors I they love. They are big and bright. And I particularly like that green that seemed to be right in the middle, right mm -hmm. above the circle. Mm -hmm. uh, that was a nice touch because it does, um, it's not necessarily uh, so much contrast, but it does, at least in my eyes, it does stick out uh, some of them. Um, and I don't know if this is an accurate statement or not, but when I first saw your work, as I said, I just saw the... Uh, the abstract when you had actually been painting uh, realistically or uh, naturalistically for some time. Is it correct to say you seem to be going back uh, more, maybe not all the way, but it seems like I'm seeing more naturalistic pieces than I, I did before where it used to be predominantly abstract? I think I am going back. I think I took my abstract to almost a limit where it's yeah. like, okay, I want to bring it back a little bit more. And I more want to give the viewer maybe a couple of things that I'm telling them and then let them decide what they want to do oh, with it, nice. like abstract landscapes. So there might right. actually be some building shapes or water shapes or cloud shapes but nothing will be defined like mm -hmm. realistically. And um, so you will stick with abstracts, you do portraits? I do not. Still lifes? Um, I've tried still lifes. Yeah. Um, it's not my favorite thing, but um, I've tried still lifes. So landscapes seem Landscapes, to be... um, I, flowers, I love doing flowers. I don't know if you'd consider that a still life, like a vase of flowers yeah, or something. I love I, doing I that. Think, yeah, yeah. yeah. Architecture, any architecture that you do? I do. Yeah. I do. And I'm actually um, taking a class right now. I take a lot of online classes right mm -hmm. now due to COVID. Mm -hmm. And um, Ian Fenley I'm taking, and he's a world-known urban sketcher. I know that name. Yes. And I just love his artwork, and it's all buildings. It's all buildings where you draw in pen and uh, then you add a little watercolor, and then you go back with um, gray tone markers, and you give value to your sketch. And I'm taking that class right now, and I'm really enjoying it. So um, I have a sketchbook now, and I'm trying to, you know, get better at buildings. I know that name. I'm almost going to say I, I follow that artist on Instagram. Yeah, I, he's I'm going to bet. Uh, yeah, he's really good. I just got his book, too, so if you want to borrow it, it's a yeah. fabulous book. Yeah. <laughs> Deborah uh, Riley lent me books, and I never return them. So, uh, <laughs> oh, okay. So be aware of that. <laughs> um, but coming, uh, so coming back, um, I wanted to come back and talk um, about the 12 by 12 just a little bit because you had, uh, like I said, that first time you were the Select 12, I don't know if, if there was a repeat on that, but that wouldn't be a surprise if not, because that typically not changes. Yet. Yeah, working not yet. You're working on it. <laughs> um, but I recall when we did live auctions then, audience, um, that uh, you and your husband, Mark, are very supportive. And I would just want to publicly say uh, uh, I appreciate that. And the Art League does it well. And when I say supportive, um, as the saying goes, putting. Um, uh, their money where their mouth is and actually bought bought some art which was to support the uh, the student funds so thank you both and beautiful uh, art too and, and beautiful from our art 
artists. Yes. And um, I may have asked, but again, how long have you been a member of the Conroe Art League? Uh, seven years now. Seven years. So you've been active in that you take a lot of classes there. Good mm -hmm. to hear that. Um, you exhibit, and then because you exhibit, you have to docent. Mm -hmm. And you also do something, uh, I'll let you explain it. There's a group that you, I think, organized and you got together. Yes, actually it was Kathy Martin and myself. Yes. We organized this group. We love to paint and we'd always get together and paint by ourselves. Yeah. And we live kind of far away from each other and it was like, it'd be nice to get more people right. involved and just paint and have fun. So, uh, started a painting group at Conroe Art League on Friday afternoons on the second and fourth Friday from one to four. Anyone can come. There's no teacher, no instruction, no fees. You just come and paint or draw, sketch, whatever you want to do. And it's just to be with fellow artists and enjoy each other's company. Share have, ideas. Share ideas. Share art, get yeah, some critique, support maybe. each other. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, we usually have some soft music on, and it's very nice, yeah. I've uh, I've been a docent uh, on Friday afternoons sometimes when I've heard the group mm -hmm. uh, seem to be having a good time up there yes. and producing some art. Um, so um, any, uh, any areas that you may be looking to expand your involvement in the Conroe Art League uh, at any point in time, or is this... Is this a pattern for you right now, the uh, the exhibit? This is thing? a good pattern right now. What I want to start doing is start exhibiting every month, put a new piece in every month. Sometimes I don't always put a new yes. piece in or I'm still working on it. And um, I want to kind of push myself to exhibit every oh, single month okay. or maybe a couple pieces. Okay, very That's good. That's kind of my goal right now. Uh, and I would be uh, impressed, you know, you said you did a piece 24 by 36. I don't know if that's the size you're going to, but... That's a lot of work to put a 24 mm -hmm. by 36 together, I would think. So yeah. that's ambitious. And uh, <laughs> uh, so I look, uh, I look forward to it. Um, if someone wanted to see your art, obviously you exhibit and you're going to, if I heard you right, you're going to begin to exhibit more at the Conroe Art League. Are there other places that, that someone in the audience might find your art? Well, I have a website, and it's MaryKWilliamsFineArt.com. Okay. www.MaryKWilliamsFineArt.com. Correct. Okay, get that, everyone. Right and I down. have a website there. Okay. And um, I also just started a Facebook group, mm -hmm. and that's called Mary Williams Fine Art. Okay. And I'm going to start generating and putting all, all kinds of art I do, even if it's just sketches. Mm -hmm. You know, I just want to start incorporating and sharing mm -hmm. what I'm doing and hopefully get ideas from other people and that may be some of that some motivation feedback. from urban sketching like yes. Ian Finley. Uh, if you're an urban sketcher and yes. you had mentioned Kathy fed you mm -hmm. and she's big on that. But yes. boy, if you're one, you're you're sketching yes. and you're producing <laughs> a lot of art. And uh, other galleries perhaps that you've uh, um, uh, I did get my own show once in yes. Historic Montgomery. It was at a coffee shop, and I had a solo short, solo show, and I had about twenty pieces of art in there. Nice. And it was really exciting. I bet it for was. myself. Yeah. How and long did the work exhibit there, Mary? For one month. That's and I nice. sold several pieces, too, so I was very happy about that. And that was a mix? That would be watercolor, acrylic, pastel? Actually, that one was mainly an acrylic show, yeah. big abstracts, big but abstract. then I did have some pastels in there, too. Wow. Yes. Did you get any commissions out of that? Uh, not yet. Not yet. I'm but still waiting home. to hear back. <laughs> <laughs> and you may yet hear back. Yes. Uh, you may yet hear back. Well, that's uh, it's all very interesting. And uh, if you want to see Mary's art, obviously you can uh, uh, come by the Conroe Art League uh, to see Mary's art, uh, as well as the art of uh, the other artists in the Conroe Art League. So visit us at the uh, uh, Best Little Art Gallery in historic downtown Conroe. We're at 127 Simonton Street. We're open Tuesday through Saturday uh, from 11 o'clock a.m. till 4 o'clock PM. So join us there, please, where we live our creed to create, appreciate, and learn. Mm -hmm.